Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'm playing along again with Kendra's card challenge number eight. This is just going to be a sort of partial look at two of the, um, how you cut down two of the pattern papers, uh, specifically E and F, because between these two pattern papers, there's actually four cards that only use these two uh, papers. So I thought that might be a nice self-contained uh, small project for uh, a set of cards. And I'll continue to kind of work at this iteration of Kendra's card challenge across multiple videos. So if you wanna see um, another video featuring uh, Kendra's card challenge from me, uh, I did also craft with the Spellbinders Winter Wonderland. And in that video, I show you the full process of using that collection to make all, <clears throat> excuse me, all of the cards that uh, you can make using Kendra's card challenge number eight, which is 17 in total. Okay, so this is, as I mentioned, paper E and um, F. And there are these interesting diagonal cuts, which is what I find so intriguing, a little bit intimidating at first, but beautiful and not as hard to do as I would have thought. So that's actually why I'm doing the card challenge again, because I really like the look of this. <laughs> so what I've done is if you look at the cutting guide, which is available for free, and I'll leave links to it in the description box below so that you can visit Kentra's Card Challenge um, website and download it for yourself. Find out all about how to enter the challenge because there are giveaways that you can win. But the cutting guide tells you exactly how to measure and where to cut so that you get and a, a very efficient cut of your six by six pattern papers. And you use just about everything in here. Um, and so that's the beauty of her um, designs is that it makes, there's little to no waste of uh, your gorgeous pattern papers. And you can make a lot of cards um, out of just six sheets of pattern paper. You do have to bring other paper and, and backgrounds and focal images and whatnot to the party, but um, she gives uh, in total for this challenge 17 card sketches. So really, really fantastic. So how I like to approach um, cutting these two in particular is I like to cut off at all the straight cuts first. So all of the sort of standard rectangular pieces. On the cutting guide, look for the pair of scissors because that shows you where your first cut needs to be. And then I'll just continue to go around and cut off all of the rectangles until I'm just left with the um, piece here where it has all of the diagonal cuts. And then I'll just use a pencil and give myself little tick marks where um, measuring exactly as it's been outlined. Keep in mind that the numbers that you see on the cutting guide are always the length of that segment. So when you're measuring, you basically wanna measure that number from the previous cut mark or in this case, a uh, pencil tick mark. And then when I go to actually make my cuts, I'm going to line up that bottom left-hand corner with the each of the pencil marks. And that's how you can achieve your diagonal cuts. You just line up the bottom left-hand corner and the pencil mark on your cutting track. Um, you could use a trimmer for this. I like to use my guillotine. It just gives me nice clean cuts. And so you use whatever you have. If, if you have uh, a steel ruler and a craft knife, that works too. Just line up your steel ruler so that you're connecting those two points. So always the bottom left corner with your pencil mark. And 
And what's um, awesome about it is, so these diagonal cuts, having been cut out of two different patterns, when you alternate them, you get this really fun kind of starburst effect. And the cat scrappiness papers I'm using are from the latest Cat's Meow release, but I've combined them with some of the uh, Possum Girls paper as well. And when I flipped this over, because I'm using a double-sided paper, I thought, well, I may as well make one that is sort of the A side of the papers and then the other one I'll make um, using the B side or the flip side. And I'm just using just some plain clear scotch tape to tape all of these segments together so that I can treat it as if it was just one, like a matte layer. And that makes it a little bit easier to position and center onto my card front. So a really, really fun, totally um, easier than I would have thought. And so I, I definitely encourage you to, to give this sketch a try. Um, if you were like me and you saw those diagonal cuts and thought, uh, that's not for me, that looks a little too hard. Um, I, I needed a little bit of a nudge from Delise, a crafty friend of mine who had already done it. So she assured me it was easy. And, um, and so I gave it a go and I want to pass that assurance on to you. So, um, so I hope you'll give it a go as well. Now I'm going to color in this a adorable. I love this cat. There are actually, I think, four different cats in the um, uh, Cat's Meow collection. And I think the stamp set is actually called Possum Cats. And so, so cute. The, the cats are in all sorts of different fun little positions. And I love this cat because uh, he's got glasses on. And so I'm coloring it so that the area behind the glass, uh, his glasses look a little bit lighter as if, you know, the glasses, just looking through the glasses, it, it um, has that effect of um, sometimes making things behind it look a little bit lighter. Um, and then I am leaving his belly and his legs white, but if you saw the um, final photos, which I always share out to Instagram, it, I'm, I'm on Instagram, but under the same handle, LV Handcrafted, and I always share my final cards there. Uh, I did go back and color in the legs of the kitty cat so that they are partially um, orange, and I left I left the white socks <laughs> on the cat. Um, like one is a little bit, has a little bit more white than the other. But I thought I would make this look a little bit more like the cat I used to have. Um, and he had orange, mostly orange legs and just white paws. So now I'm uh, going to use some sentiments from the uh, possum cat's sentiment stamp set and <laughs> my favorite one has to be live long and prosper because it just speaks to the sci-fi geek in me and that's why I wear glasses too so that's why this cat really spoke to me and the sentiment seemed to match up uh, perfectly with him as well so I've just brought out my um, set of cross stitch circle dies uh, and I'll link to everything in the description box below but I've also got this um, I stenciled out the ball of yarn 6x6 six six stencil onto a rather large piece where I stenciled using Versamark ink and I clear heat embossed and so I'm going to use a bit of that stenciled uh, paper as part of my background on one of my circle layers. And this first card, though, is going to be pretty simple because I <laughs> this is probably my second favorite sentiment from that set. And <laughs> I just love the uh, the play on words there. But um, here you can kind of see that stenciled background. The the Versamark and clear embossing just has the effect of 
watermarking or, or, or darkening your colored cardstock. So it sort of gives it a very, um, you know, subtle tone on tone effect. And of course, by clear embossing it, you get that extra bit of shininess to the enamel as well as uh, some texture too. So here's a look at the first two cards um, that use uh, the pattern paper, the, the two pattern paper cuts. And I'll be making two more cards because um, these two here, sketch 15 and 17, also only use papers E and F. And besides these four, <clears throat> excuse me, besides these four cards that I'm showing, there are some additional pieces that get used onto, uh, on other designs as well. But I'm going to set those aside, save them for when I get to those card sketches. But I thought these four were really nice and self-contained because they mostly use up all of these two sheets and they only use these two sheets. So I thought this would make for a really nice um, uh, way to kind of start at this uh, challenge because when I did the card challenge with the um, Winter Wonderland set, I actually sat down and, you know, I took breaks, but it basically took me an entire Saturday to make, to cut, you know, um, collage and assemble all 17 cards. And I know that's probably not that realistic for everybody to do. And so you can always approach this challenge in uh, small chunks. And that's what I'll be doing for the, for this go round. And so that's why I've chosen just these two papers to start because they, they and you'll find this to be true of some of the other um, papers as well, where the combination of one or two you'll see on several cards. And so it does make it a little bit easier to kind of approach this in um, phases or, or in smaller craft sessions or shorter shorter craft sessions because very, very manageable to just make, uh, cut up two um, pattern papers and then make four cards. At least for me, I can fit that into a nice small chunk of time pretty easily. And um, with this next set of cards, like I mentioned, you do sometimes need to kind of bring more bring more to the party. And so that can be in the form of backgrounds that you've made, um, solid color cardstock, additional uh, die cut shapes. So here I'm using the stitch hexagon on one card and I'm using the nested um, a square postage set in on the second card and some solid color cardstock for both of them. So, um, but you can see, especially for these two card designs, you don't, you don't need too much more than what the pattern papers will, will give you. And in particular, the previous two cards, I really love those sketches because they really do make the pattern paper the star because of that really um, interesting starburst cut or pattern. And so I definitely find with Kendra's card challenge, there are going to be some card sketches that, that really let the paper shine and you don't have to add much more to it. And then there are other sketches where you might have to bring, you might have to bring a lot more to the party and, and, sort of create additional interest because the pattern paper is just maybe like one element of the background as opposed to, you know, nearly vying to be the focal <laughs> image. So, um, and I think these two sketches are somewhere in between where the pattern paper, because of how it's being used, is adding, you know, interest to the design, not just an element that's kind of 
in the background, but really the star is meant to be whatever your focal image is. So, um, so I really love that there is that, there is that variety in the card sketches. Um, but you, if you're going to, if you've never done the Kendra's card challenge before, just know going in that you'll need more than just the six pattern papers that you choose. And when I did, uh, Kendra's card challenge seven, I actually, used more pattern paper from the Santa Lane kit instead of just bringing in solid color cardstock. I used more papers out of that six by six paper pad that came in that, um, in that kit bundle. So you also don't have to feel constrained to just using, um, the six pattern papers that you chose at the outset. So I've got my two kitties here. This is going to be, this has got to be my second favorite kitty. And I, I, almost always color my critters in, you know, sort of somewhat uh, realistic colors, even though I'm not going for hyper realism when I actually do my coloring because I'm not that good of a colorist to be able to pull that off. But I thought for one of my cards, it would be really fun to just color in a wacky color. Um, and so I chose pink. <laughs> for one of my kitty cats and for my other cat I want to keep uh, the card on the left I wanted to keep that very um, two-toned so not quite monochromatic because there's there's two colors but you know to keep it uh, minimal and so I've colored that cat in gray and I also wanted to add more balls of yarn to just bring forward the the stenciled design that's behind the cat and I want to make it seem like my cat is just um you know taking a little bit of a nap on this like soft super comfortable um pile of yarn and so uh, that's where I'll assemble him so that he is um, just laying here. I'm gonna put some liquid adhesive on the on the border on the edges, but I'm putting my 3D glue gel in the center so that he's a little bit popped up. He's a little bit raised, and because it's all liquid adhesive, I can still I can still tuck the uh, balls of yarn under him and sort of. Uh, position it as I go as I evaluate the composition and I that way you don't have to like figure figure out that that bed of <laughs> yarn for my cat uh, I can stick the cat down first and and know exactly where I need to position the the yarn after and the sentiments in the possum cat sentiment stamp set are just they're all so so funny um I love the one on the left it says if cats could talk they wouldn't and it's so true they they are they are so independent and <laughs> and they really just can't be bothered sometimes and then this one's super cute to keep calm and purr on and I did add a little bit of white gel pen highlights to my um, my colored in uh, stamped images. So I just added a couple of the same white gel highlights to the paw prints that are part of the sentiment as well. So I hope that you enjoyed um, this video and um, I hope you'll give, I'm not affiliated with Kendra's card challenge at all. I just enjoy uh, them ever since I've uh, discovered it, which was only at number seven. But um, having done two now, I can say I, I I enjoy her card challenges. I think they're novel and really fun and um, great to learn new ways of cutting down your paper too. Thanks so much for joining me today. And um, until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.